Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week. Now, Scotch broom, let's be honest, you don't see it very much. And you see it more in English gardens, a little more milder weathers, you may see it. But a lot of these are actually hardy here, and I have seen examples of the brooms growing here, even in my neighborhood. So we should go and sort of cover them so that you can have something that's a little unusual, a little different, but also it blooms early in most cases, and it's almost a substitute for, for Scythia because of the coloring and the timing, though I have to admit some of them bloom at a slightly different time than some of the forsythias, etc. So you have to check that out. Let's start with one of the best. It is Sister Golden Hair. That sounds like a song. Okay. I think maybe I'm showing my age, but isn't that a song from the 60s? But anyways, it's got a, a bright, sunny spring color. The flowers are bright gold. They cascade down. It has larger showy flowers than most other weeping varieties of Scotch broom. It plants and grows well in dry, sandy soils and as a good accent plant for spring landscapes. It's not recommended for the Northwest because of the weather wet, then they don't like it. That's one of the reasons why we tell you that it is for well-drained, drier, sandier soils. It's better that way. Hardy to zone 5, though I'm going to say more likely 6. I would put it in an area, the ones that grow around here actually grow right out in the middle of nowhere so that the, they are exposed to the complete winter wind, etc., and yet do very, very well. Now, the thing is that I would still give it some winter protection in most areas. Now, the next one is Burke Wood Eye. It has a little bit of a bright red and yellow uh, that darken to maroon and purple burgundy. Now, that's a different type of bloom completely. It's more vigorous. It's a bushy grower. So you're looking more at a bush with an upright habit as opposed to weeping. Okay? So you got a different color and you've got one that's more of a bush. Three to six feet tall. The bloom is in early summer and it loves the sun. So I think what you're going to find is it's going to require the same good, well-drained soil. Then there's Hollandia. Now, it's fragrant summer flowers, yellow fall color. It's an upright shrub that is a little more adaptable to wetter soils and shadier conditions. It's considered a native It's hardy to zone, I'm going to say zone six, okay? Summer bloom, uh, lots of sun, supposedly deer resistant, but it is going to be a good five feet tall for sure. So three to six, upright, will tolerate wetter soils. So there's your key to which one you actually go and get, okay? Lena is another one. It has uh, maroon buds that open to a lemony yellow to orange. Okay, so they evolve or change as they mature the flowers. And it happens in late May to early June. And I think you'll find that this one gets about three to four feet tall, blooms in early summer, deer resistant supposedly. But because of the changing colors on the flowers, you get, let's just say, you'll get a different look in your garden and different colors, and it's going to be changing. So 
interest in a garden. Again, and Hardy 2, I'm going to say Zone 6. So those are the Scotch brooms that are a little better known and done. Now there's two more. There's Madame Butterfly, great opera. It has fragrant yellow flowers and lots of them that have a red throat. And it has that green grassy type foliage that very often a lot of people sort of recognize it as broom if it has that. Um, hardy too, about zone six, three to six feet tall. It's more upright. I would go with this one in better soils. And I think you'll find that it, again, is going to give you some interesting fragrance. And that's something we don't get enough of in a garden. Moonlight is uh, the last one. It's got tons of flowers. They're moonlight yellow, which means it's usually a little lighter yellow. It's upright, five to six feet tall, hardy to zone six and I think you're going to find it's an early summer bloomer for us. And uh, it's going to love the sun, which usually means it likes a little better quality, better drained soils. I think all of those will really give you something a little different in your garden. That people won't say, oh, look, there is something different in this garden. So try those and see. There is some others that I'd like to do. There is one called Dutzia. Now, Dutzia has been around a long time. And there's the big Dutzias and there's the dwarf Dutzias. And when you went to school like I did, you everybody loves to put in the dwarf Dutzias. The big Dutzias, you're going to have room for. They're more of an estate plant that if you let them take their natural form, will cast, come up and cascade and do a really great job and really fill out. But the little dwarf ones are fantastic in most home gardens. And they've been doing some nice work with Dutzias to give them smaller flowering shrub. And I think that's what we're looking for here. Let's start with a couple of the newer and better varieties. Dutzia Chardonnay Pearls. This has a lime yellow foliage. It's got the pearl-like buds. Okay, so the buds look like little pearls. And they're white. And then they open up all of a sudden into a nice white. Then they are nice in a perennial garden because they'll mix with this as well. And they give you a good compact shape shrub. So it is good in the fact that it's compact naturally, gives you a little less work, gives you the flowers. And it's hardy to zone about five. And it's going to be about one and a half to three feet tall. It blooms in the spring, loves the sun, does semi-shade. I think you'll like this one. And then there's creme fraiche. Now, creme fraiche is considered, in a lot of ways, the better. And the reason for that is the fact that it's variegated. And... What I like about it is the variegation, so it gives you color in the garden when it's not in bloom. It should be planted uh, near a yellow flowered annuals or perennials, and that really stands out. It's variegated leaves. Occasionally, this plant will revert to plain. That is the one maintenance thing you've got to get those out. But it's worthwhile putting into a garden, and uh, I think you're going to like it. Hardy do zone five, one and a half to three feet tall, and loves the sun. I think you're going to like this one. 
it's got the little white flowers and all of that, but it's mainly growing for um, its variegated foliage. Nico is a little more low spreading. It has lots of white flowers, uh, a burgundy fall color. So that's different, right? And it makes a good ground cover. Now that's different. Hardy to zone 5, and it's only 1 to 2 feet tall. And then there is Yuki Cherry Blossom. Now a lot of people are really going after these. And the reason for it is the fact that it's got pink flowers. It's going to be one to two feet tall. It's going to be hardy to about zone five. It's going to give you lots of pink flowers. Low. It makes beautiful mass bedding. But because it's tidy, it's mounted, it's got a nice, rich, burgundy, purple fall color. And it's... um. Believe it or not, the hummingbirds like this guy. So there is something that, you know, you want to throw that one in just for those, okay? And then there's Yuki Snowflake. Again, a heavy bloomer, white flowers uh, in spring. And it's usually in about May. It's got a nice round habit, which most of the dwarf dootsies do have a decent, nice habit. But the fall color is um, quite nice as well. So you're going to get a little more attractive fall color. You're going to get a mounded, neat plant. You're going to get heavy white blooms in May. Yeah, about May. Sometime in late May. And uh, it's hardy to zone 5, and it's only 1 to 2 feet tall. So you've got fall interest, neat, and um, gives you blooms as well. Those are the plant that have evolved from when I went to school, where you had one variety of dwarf ones that everybody grew, and you had one or two of the big varieties that people grew but you didn't see them very much and uh, but people did grow the more dwarf one because it was easier to put into your landscape these are all so much better so much more improved than the old varieties that have been around forever i think it was limoni or something like that it's way long ago and these are so much better every one of these is better than those. I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this has been the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week.